slide one. <clears throat> yeah, here we go. Hello, um, my name is Mia Franklin. I'm a client success associate with Neon One, and I'd like to welcome you to Elevate Your Digital Presence, the top five small ways to drive big impact through your website. Before we get started, I'm gonna take care of just a few housekeeping items. Can we go to slide two, please? And the next one. Thank you. So just to put your minds at ease, this webinar is being recorded. We're gonna be sending you a follow-up email with a link to the webinar so that you'll be able to access it in the future. Second, um, please use the Q&A area to submit any questions. We will make an effort to address all of your questions during the webinar, but we also have saved some time at the end to address any outstanding questions as well. And then third and finally, yes, we will nerd out a little bit uh, as we share the best practices for website development. So at um, the next slide, please, please allow me to introduce your guides for today. Andres D'Souza. Andres is the manager of the Web Studio team and has seven years of experience designing websites. And he's also worked one on one with many nonprofit clients. And then Mary DeMar. Mary has been with NEON as a professional services consultant for five years. She helps organizations implement NEON CRM and Web Studio products such as the NEON Inspire websites or standalone features such as membership directories. Prior to her time with NEON, she built her career as a fundraiser for social service nonprofits. Mary, would you like to take it from here? Yes, thank you, Mia. All right, so before we go over the specific ways that you can drive impact through your website, we wanna talk a little bit about how you can get started. So a few tips here, researching the market. So you wanna find examples of design and content that are inspirational to you. So especially if you are actually creating content, it could be helpful to look at other nonprofit websites as examples, larger global organizations that might have more of a presence or be up to date with web design trends. Just a good way to get examples. And then gathering resources. So you wanna focus on specific best practices that are for your mission and your constituency. For example, accessibility or the people that you serve um, and your supporters. You wanna understand their level and comfortability with technology, but also their reading comprehension, for example. And then similarly, you wanna be your end user. So that involves defining your target audience and viewing your website through their lens, their perspective. The concept of perfecting your message, so you wanna make sure you have a very clear call to actions and that you have a compelling case for support. So I like to think of this as, what is your digital elevator speech? And then keep innovating. So after you launch a new website or you update any kind of content, you wanna continuously look for ways that you can improve. So this is important because the average lifespan of a website is two years. So we'll talk more about measuring success and improving later. Um, next slide, please. And then why is this important? Why does it matter? So at NEON, we build websites based off of the studies and best practices from the Nielsen Norman Group. So they're a global industry leader and they've conducted a lot of different research specifically on nonprofit websites. So what we do is we take these concepts and incorporate them into every website that we build. Uh, some highlights from their research studies that show how this is important. They found that half of all websites had used usability problems. So this could be difficulty navigating, not knowing where to click or how to access important information. So it's gonna cause frustration and a user can just exit your website completely, which will lower your conversion rate. And then more than 40% had content issues. So that could be information that's incorrect or missing that could lower your credibility as it's perceived from a user on your site. And then, 
Finally, a study showed that 13% of users could not find where to donate. So that's going to cause donor abandonment and reduce your fundraising effectiveness overall. Um, but luckily, you can identify these items and correct them. And now I'll turn it over to Andreas to go through the concepts of improving your website. Thank you, Mary. Um, so uh, first of all, um, I wanted to dive in into the first way to drive uh, impact to, on your site. And, um, uh, and the first one for us is to drive organic traffic effectively. And with that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about three items in specific. So uh, branding, social media, and blog content. Uh, which are uh, key to um, drive those users into your website. Um, the first one uh, that, that we have here is uh, branding. So you really want to set uh, the tone that you want to have control over how you're uh, presenting your organization to others. Uh, since it's your site, you set the design, which affords you the flexibility to optimize the user's experience in ways they um, directly support your business model and your uh, brand related goals. Uh, there's no competition on your website. Uh, it's just a branded um, experience that you direct yourself. Um, basically with your branding, you set the tone that you want and have control over how you're presenting uh, your organization to others. Uh, next, uh, with social media, uh, you really wanna invest in engaging users with uh, social media account or several social media accounts by posting content that will drive traffic back to your website and uh, further broaden your reach. Uh, so when we talk about print versus digital, if you consider about uh, the cost of print and mar marketing materials and the, think about the cost of actually designing a website or open social media accounts, you will see the difference between those uh, uh, prices. And then you'll see the that um, with social media and websites, you will have a longer term plan um, and a broader reach. Um, and it's important to use um, always the same graphics on all of your accounts uh, that are out there, uh, the same branding tone uh, that you use in order to create some sort of a, um, a, a feel of community. Uh, and then lastly, we have a blog content. Uh, the blog content is something that uh, a lot of our clients um, uh, use, and um, it's very key to engage, creating engagement. Uh, basically, um, using the blog to uh, share updates on your current projects and tell stories of how you help others is uh, very important. And um, in a digital world, uh, users are overwhelmed with information and it's important to, uh, with uh, one of the, the blog content to create uh, engagement and with your organization and frequently post blogs, uh, posts uh, that could be about events that your organization is running um, and any sort of um, 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 blog post that your organization is interested on and that could um, drive some interest in, in your users. And the next uh, uh, slide that I have here for you all is a key to uh, improving the site that you're building or the site that you already have. And this is another way to um, drive uh, new users and keep the ones you currently have and it's to optimize your site for online accessibility. So most cons consumers expect you to have a website nowadays and um, they, they're they expecting to interact with your site in some some way. And uh, it's really important to make the, the trip of um, in, enjoying your um, the site and interacting with it as smooth as possible. So for this, uh, we compile a list of key items that are very important when thinking about optimizing or um, improving the, the way your site is structured. So first of all, um, uh, it's important to use a um, um, content management system or uh, basically a framework that is 
widely used, so there's more support to backup and that uh, supports mobile responsiveness. So most users now, a um, uh, big chunk have a phone or, or a tablet device and they want to view your site through that. And it's, imp it's important to improve the way your site is laid out on those devices as well. So mobile responsiveness is key. So choosing uh, um, a framework that supports that, it's very important. And, and this is also related to uh, my next point here is uh, creating a fast load speed on your site. So adjusting the content um, that users are loading on the page to have a loading time of three to four seconds. Uh, so you really want to um, pay attention to how fast your pages are loading uh, because users might just disregard your site or keep going diving into your site furthermore if they don't have that uh, load speed. And then with that, we have optimized images and fonts. Uh, this is also pertains to, fa to load speed, but also to readability and accessibility. So um, it's important to pay close attention of the weight of your images to not have images that are heavier than uh, one megabyte um, that are actually the size of the image that you're showing, showcasing on your site, nothing larger. And then uh, it's important for fonts to have contrast, to use uh, web-friendly fonts and size and resolution. So fonts that are actually easy to read for the user. Um, next, we have Google Search Console set up. So it's important uh, for basically orgs to, that, are, that have a website to keep checking on metrics on your site. So checking on how your site is doing, how the, which, uh, where your users are coming from and um, how that engagement is happening. So you can improve certain pieces of your site or your social media handles. And then um, another key point that pertains to load speed is offload files to third parties. So a lot of our clients um, use uh, media, um, specific uh, things such as video or audio. So it's important to um, offload those kind of pieces to a third party service uh, for video. I'll recommend something like YouTube or Vimeo. And uh, the the thing with this is that it will not only um, offload that uh, loading time to another party, but it will also, that other party that it it was built for meant for for that video structure they will it will give you a uh, stat so for youtube it will give you view, how many views your video has so those are also metrics that you can track uh, and lastly uh, have workable forms and links so because since i mentioned before um users will like to interact with your site somehow get involved and, and it's important to make sure your forms are in good shape and that users can actively just interact with your site uh, effectively. Um, next, um, it's more towards um, creating a sense of community. Uh, right now, um, you can have a website that is uh, optimized and that runs perfectly, but it's also important in the same level to um, think about the story that you're giving to your clients, the, the whole content that you're providing uh, through your website. So first of all, um, your site is um, the best way to tell your story. So with your story, um, telling your story is one of the most rewarding benefits of a great nonprofit site, and it can help you clearly and effectively uh, effectively communicate important information about your organization. Organization. So uh, with that, you'll be able to add everything uh, from your mission statement, vision, community, impact, and more. Um, you can use the blog to keep people updated on your current projects and tell stories of how you help others or blog about recent news and events. Um, next, uh, create a unique space. So by unifying your branding and message all across platforms, you'll basically nail down your group users 
so working towards sending a uni unified message through all your digital platforms is key. Uh, social, so, social media, newsletter, ads, uh, your own website, and that will create a sense of community and involvement. Um, next, uh, it's to get users involved. So great nonprofit websites are tools you can use to engage visitors and convert them into donors. And uh, basically a great website won't just serve as a place for people to learn about your organization. It can also help ensure that your accomplishments uh, and the most important features of your organization are highlighted and in a strategic, uh, basically they're highlighted in a strategic way that will uh, convince more people to get involved with your org. And then lastly, uh, drive new interests. Uh, so it's important to also focus your resources to showcase and um, remind your community how their help has made a difference. Uh, so uh, this basically will, having that on your side will show good things are happening uh, with your organization and this will also boost engagement uh, with your public and it makes um, it makes new users that are coming to your site get involved so the word is spread so there are more and more users coming into your site with this way uh, so right here we have a set of um, items that um, are more towards uh, content uh, so this is another way that we have found that um, also improves your um, user um, readability and uh, user experience overall. And it's creating content that basically hides, highlights what your supporters want to know the most. Uh, so first of all, we have your story. So before I was mentioning that this, your story is the best way to highlight uh, what your organization is about. So having that on the homepage and on the about page is uh, key. So a lot of our clients use uh, your, their story uh, highlighted somehow on their site with a blurb and a picture that also pertains to the org. And then having a link to um, know more about the organization and about page that will have more content, uh, more of the history and vision of the org. Then testimonials are also a great thing that uh, a lot of our uh, clients use and we've seen that makes big impact on, on websites. So having a highlighted section that could be a carousel where you're uh, going through different uh, testimonials from um, um, constituents or even from volunteers that are have been um, interacting with your organization. So those can be highlighted so new users can see some of what's going on with the organization, then having quantitative data. So uh, for that, um, basically having uh, percentages or numbers that could also back up your efforts. So having, uh, let's say, uh, your organization uh, helps the homeless, homeless community. Um, basically, you can highlight um, in that example of how many um, uh, homeless have uh, have had shelter with uh, thanks to our organization. So things like that, that um, create a sense of uh, a community also gives users uh, the impact of your organization into the community. And it also strongly supports your vision and uh, mission as a org. Um, then having a highlighted section for events and fundraising. So this is also important to have just um, on the homepage and other internal pages just to have um, the latest events that are happening. Uh, a lot of orgs right now are, are doing uh, digital uh, events such as a webinar and uh, running fundraisers, so live fundraisers. So those are key to have on your site. So highlight that on either a slider on your homepage or having it somewhere um, on your homepage that could take users to a broader list of events and uh, initiatives that your organization is about. Then um, uh, basically include ways to get involved or in touch with your users, uh, with your constituents. So 
basically uh, having a call to action to get involved, donate, become a member, depending on what your organization uh, key uh, call action is. And then um, including media. So having just content won't just do uh, uh, basically constituents and uh, users in general like to see um, an image next to content that pertains to also the image pertains to the content and so on. So you can also back up your uh, all the content that you that the user is seeing with an Im an image that is appealing to the user as well and uh, allows them to also uh, feel like they want to get more involved with or know more about what the content is saying and then uh, members only content so this is on this only pertains to uh, um, orgs that um, have member membership bases base um, and basically having um, sense of uh, group for those members and having um, content add-on onto your uh, member-only pages. So basically keeping uh, updating those pieces, having uh, either PDFs or some sort of uh, content that you, digital content that you can provide to your uh, members and have them on, on your site laid out easily. Um, and lastly, I wanted to but include this question. So now that I've included all these different key points of uh, content, that these key pieces that should be on your site, how do I really organize everything on my site? Because it's just so much content. So we're, basically, with that, um, there is a method called the C layout. So the C layout is basically a way that um, users read and analyze a website. So uh, the C layout in reduces the cognitive strain by leading the users where you want to direct them without having too much on, on a page. So first of all, we have uh, what is called the form input. So that's where the your logo will go, um, the first piece and what your, what is part of your branding and users can relate to that organization and the logo uh, together. Then you have the call to action. So that will be a highlighted button on the right corner where it has the call to action that could be donate, become a member, get involved. And then right after that, uh, your, your eyes go to the headline or supporting copy. And that's where you have um, a highlighted section that could be um, your mission, uh, just a little bit more about your uh, organization, or simply an event, the latest, the most upcoming event that the organization is part of. Uh, and then after, right next to that, uh, it's important just to have an associated branding effect, or uh, that could be an image or a video that is backing up your headline or supporting copy. So for that, uh, we have here one of our example foundation sites. Um, and we build this in uh, thinking about the C layout and other nonprofit and uh, website best practices. And um, I include this question, do you see the C layout? Um, and I'm just gonna go to the next slide. So I included arrows here. So you'll see how um, we have on the left side the logo where it says inspired education so that's where your logo will go to and then right next to that um donate which is the call action to this specific site and it's highlighted with a big button in yellow and then right that after that it goes to this blurb of text where it will tell more about the organization the mission with an action button and lastly a, a key image that is portraying this uh, child that is looking up and it brings some value into the content that you're uh, experiencing. Um, so I'm gonna leave you all with uh, Mary for the last one. Awesome, thank you, Andreas. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now we're gonna talk a little bit about how to measure success. Um, gathering and collecting data is going to allow you to analyze that and take specific actions for improvement. 
So how to track that on your website and how do you know what works? Um, even if your website is you know, five years old or you're just launching a brand new website, you can start collecting data immediately, automatically, and that's gonna give you insight into what's working and what's not. Um, so a few specific things, an analytics tool, um, you're probably familiar with or have used Google Web Analytics. Um, that's a common tool that's used. It's free and basically it's just an easy way to collect data on the users who are visiting your site. Um, then the concept of knowing your conversion rate. So your conversion rate is the percentage, percentage of users that complete a call to action. So that could be the percentage of donors that make a donation on the form or purchase a membership, signing up to be a volunteer, whatever that main call to action is. So when you kind of know that rate, you can identify areas for improvement. And then when you're thinking about improvement, you want to create measurable goals. So once you have your data and then you can see what you need to improve, then you can develop specific goals and do some testing to see you know, exactly what's working. And then with A-B testing, this is something you can do that's going to allow you to like truly define what works, trying different options. So you're relying on results as opposed to you know your intuition. So when you're doing this, you want to identify metrics that are important to your organization. So that would commonly be a revenue stream such as donations or fundraising. And then next we have an example of website growth metrics. So these are the year-over-year -year growth metrics that we track on our clients' websites as a way to try and determine their overall success. So specifically, we're using online transactions, which are obviously easy, quant easily quantifiable. Um, so these, this is a comparison from 2018 to 2019. And overall, we saw a 30% increase in the number of total transactions. Specifically, Specifically looking at memberships, we saw a 15% increase. And then for new accounts, more than 60% increase. So this would be a user interacting with your website by completing a form, such as a contact information form or other kind of action. And then finally, um, for events, we saw a little bit over a 30% increase in event registrations. And then next, I am happy to introduce our next speaker, Deirdre Connor. She is the Senior Director of Strategic Initiatives and Evaluation at the Nonprofit Center for Northeast Florida. So their mission is to provide services, programs, and information resources for their members, and also advocate for the Northeast Florida nonprofit sector locally and at the state level. So their organization has been a client with NEON since 2019, and Deirdre has been a key component to their success, so she is going to share her insight. Great, thank you so much, Andres and Mary. Um, happy to be here, and I can just speak to a couple of things about my experience. Um, the recent transition from our website and CRM at the Nonprofit Center is actually my third in my career, and my background is actually in uh, communications and marketing. So um, I really appreciated everything you all were sharing before, um, particularly around the measurement part, because it is so hard to close that loop and check in on your goals. And I think having a plan for that before you kick off a project is is really important. Um, uh, you know, that dovetails with a couple of just key, uh, you know, ideas and advice for anyone who is embarking on this type of project like this. Um, for us, it was really a, a major undertaking. And so it was crucially important to understand what our goals were going in. That's something I, I know from previous experiences as well, understanding what you're trying to accomplish. And um, we actually even did a, a inventory and staff interviews to try to really get clear about what um, what it is that we wanted and were trying to achieve with the project. Um, also knowing our pain points and what we were trying to resolve from the standpoint of um, solutions that we were seeking through the CRM and um, website. Um, I, I wanna echo what was said before about um, having a blog um, for updating your constituency on important things. That is something we didn't have before and are doing now. I know it is um, really crucial for us and is driving some site growth. And I, I know from previous experiences at other organizations too that having that um, feature on your site 
it, it, at least in the other organizations I've been a part of, it's been the primary driver of site growth, particularly for organizations that are trying to um, build your reputation and build your um, constituency online or offline. Um, some ideas for others going through a, a project such as this, um, in addition to just having a really clear idea of what your goals are and how you plan to measure the achievement of those goals, um, really thinking through what your budget is and what it will be for future years. I think um, one of you mentioned that, you know, the shelf life can be two, three years for a website. And so understanding what your needs are now, but also kind of trying to keep an eye on what your needs may be in the future, um, depending on the direction of your organization, um, really considering your organization's overall strategic plan and um, how this type of project fits in that can be really helpful, not just for making sure that your um, your goals are correct, but also for helping um, attract support for um, capacity infrastructure. Um, a couple of other things that, that I would suggest would be um, looking at what um, individual staff members will be doing um, as part of the project and how they will play a role in making sure everybody understands that going in so that um, as many folks on your team as need to be involved and I, I suggest a lot actually um, are are well aware of what their responsibilities for the project will be so those are just a couple of ideas um, and I'm happy to answer any questions Great. Well, uh, thank you, Deirdre. We appreciate the insight that you have shared with us. Um, and thanks for sticking around for our Q&A session, which is right now. So we're going to transition into a little Q&A. We have been keeping up with the questions in the queue, but there were, was, uh, two, there were two in particular that we thought would be great to share gen more generally as well. So continue to add those questions to the queue uh, and we'll address those as well. So the uh, one question was, what are the best tools for designing and creating a website? So Andres, with your uh, seven years experience, did you want to take on that one? Yeah, um, so the best tools, so um, there are many, uh, usually for um, gathering that sort of data, um, we have, or I personally have used uh, Yoast. Uh, this is uh, an add-on that can be added into uh, WordPress and can help a lot of uh, nonprofits uh, and have uh, basically help a lot of nonprofits to gather data. Um, basically, Yoast uh, helps out um, basically um, improving the content that you're including on your posts and for best practices. Uh, there are other tools that I'm thinking. So Google Analytics is key to uh, for a lot of uh nonprofits to use as well so they can see metrics and then um uh, gather some stats on how their site is doing uh the google search console that i mentioned uh, previously uh, with that you can also see uh where your users are coming from so if you if you have a, a different uh, social media accounts facebook uh, twitter instagram and you, you can see with Google Search Console where those are coming from and then exactly, and then gather more of those resources into either uh, keep doing what you're doing with that social media handle or improving the others with the success that you're having on the other one. So um, those are key uh, factors that you can improve with that data as well. Great, thank you uh, for that. And then there, there was another question that was getting sort of like to the heart of the data. Um, the question was, in which ways can I make improvements to my site from the data I get out of the tools, such as the Google search uh, console that you mentioned? Uh, basically, how, how can you get more out of that? Is that what you're? Um, well, the question was how how can mm -hmm. they use the data that they're receiving mm -hmm. out of Google Search Console to make oh, improvements yeah. to their website? Yeah, so uh, basically I will look into um, which pages are doing better and then uh, kind of imitate what those pages have. And that's something that uh, a lot of clients do and they just 
see certain pages that have uh, more of an impact and that could sometimes just be because you have the get involved page and that's the one that has more call to actions or more ways to interact with the site and that's why you will get more uh, page views but uh, you can also uh, see how other pages are doing and then try to imitate the layout um, of those pages. Um, I usually recommend using tools uh, such as a front-end editor to basically uh, some of these front editors have a tool to copy pages and then clone certain pieces of certain pages so you can also do that as well and then um, with that data that you collect wonderful mm -hmm. um let's see there was a question to ask for a little more detail on how to drive traffic and new mm -hmm. groups to the websites would you like to give some recommendations on that? How to drive uh, more traffic? Yes. Yeah, so uh, as I said before, uh, I think social media is key uh, to drive uh, more traffic to your site. Having um, an optimized blog, uh, so using the tool that I mentioned, uh, Yoast, for example, it, it will provide you with ways to improve the content and um, I'm not saying only the way you're type, you're uh, laying out the information, but how that gets tracked. So you you can use more keywords that are uh, broadly uh, search. Uh, so um, using it will give you the tool to also um, include exact words that will be trackable more than others and. Um, Basically, that that will be key into having your site uh, be uh, positioned in Google search and having more uh, page views. So you really want uh, your content to be rich on that sort of data. So more users are coming to your site by searching certain words or uh, information. Perfect. Um, there was a, a final question that um, we can share about how does uh, Google Analytics work with the uh, websites? Yeah, so uh, basically Google Analytics, um, ha it's uh, free to use. So you just have to uh, uh, log in with your uh, Gmail account and then it will give you uh, a specific key that starts with UA and that key uh, will need to be included on your site's head tag. So on the code, you include that. Uh, in certain sites, um, for example, our, our websites include a field for clients to put that key. But if you're using a regular HTML site or um, WordPress site, uh, you can either um, just go into the code and then paste that uh, key in there or go in the WordPress customizer and there should be a uh, way also depending on which theme uh, you're using to include that sort of um, key in the heading tag and then after that it's included um, basically all of your pages on your site share that key on the heading tag because it's part of your uh, heading navigation with the menu items and those are tracked through uh, Google it takes about like 24 hours to start tracking, but it will give you how many people are on your site at the, at the time. It will give you uh, stats on page views and all that. It will do that all that automatically and you just have to log into uh, the Google Analytics website. Mm -hmm. so, um, so Andres, with uh, Neon Inspire websites, how do we manage constituent privacy concerns? Uh, so all the constituents are handled through uh, uh, the CRM, um, but uh, if you're talking about um, including, um, so all of our clients, uh, as and inclusive, including the ones I've worked with, uh, have never like um, display any uh, sort of uh, information regarding constituents in in there. The only uh, ones that have done it uh, have, have been doing it through a member directory, but uh, that can be restrained re restrained by uh, 
uh, restricting the page for members only if necessary. So if you don't want to uh, protect that data, I will suggest using something that we have, for example, called single sign-on, and that will um, um, basically create a login portal for users to log in in order to view certain pages on your site. So it works with the CRM and it basically allows users to log in and then after they log in, they will see the information you're providing. So that's a way to um, basically protect your constituents and your mm -hmm. members. Sounds great. Well, mm -hmm. um, being respectful of everyone's time, I do want to thank you all and Deidre, as well as our hosts, Andres and Mary, for joining us today as we explored small ways to drive big impact through website design. Um, as a reminder, this webinar has been recorded and an email will be sent to all attendees with a link to the webinar and uh, links to the slides as well. Um, if we can go to our next slide, I just want to show the email address for anyone who has any detailed questions or if you're interested in exploring um, a neon inspire web studio solution such as a website or a standalone uh, membership directory, if you would kindly send Send an email to client success at neon1.com. We will definitely have someone get back in touch with you and address any of your uh, individual questions, as well as have a nice discussion on what your website needs may be in the future. And um, in addition, we're going to be providing some additional resources in the PDF. So look when you receive the PDF, look for the last slide and you'll find those there. Well, um, again, thank you to our hosts and our guests and to everyone for joining us. We appreciate that you spent your time with us today, and we wish you a happy Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for your time, everyone. Bye. Take care.